G'day ladies and gents and welcome to Mags TV and today we'll be taking a look at Thrustmaster's new T16000M flight control system. Well I say new but it's really only half true but we'll get to that in a moment. First things first, the unboxing. The FCS comes in a rather small box for a full HOTAS setup. It's well packed with foam to keep the units safe with no real movement that I could see inside. The HOTAS comes fully assembled and is rather small itself, with the stick base being larger than the throttle and the throttle length being only slightly larger than the depth of a standard gaming keyboard, as you can see here. The box contains the joystick, the throttle, two small manuals that direct you to online sites in multiple languages, and a second set of grip rubbers for the joystick, but I'll come to that later. My first impressions of the HOTAS after unboxing were impressed. The finish of the joystick is very nice, with good ergonomics and a very nice feel to the rubbers, the plastic used is of high quality, and again it has a good durable feel while looking quite attractive. However none of this should be surprising since the stick itself is not really all that new. It's an improved version of the T16000M flight stick that has been available from Thrustmaster for some time. It has the same replacement rubbers that allow you to change it from a left hand to a right hand stick, making it one of the only sticks on the market that is capable of doing this. Three buttons on the top evenly spaced around the point of view hat and positioned to be easily accessible regardless of if the stick is in left hand or right hand configuration, and the stick itself also has a twist axis for rudder control. The base contains a small throttle axis at the centre rear of its base with 12 buttons, 6 per side, also on the base. Internally, the stick features the same internals as the already well-loved T16000. It uses the same hall sensor technology as the Thrustmaster Warthog. Overall, the only real changes to the FCS version of the T16000 over the already available one is what appears to be some build quality improvements. The stick feels slightly more solid than the previous version, which was already fantastic. The addition of braille style markings to the buttons on the base allowing them to be more easily identified without needing to look at them, and the obvious color change to orange with black and orange detailing. An already fantastic and reliable flight stick simply updated and improved for this new HOTAS release. The throttle on the other hand, while still having a very nice finish and being made of very similar if not the same plastic to the flight stick, is very apparent to have a much lighter construction. The plastic used in it is clearly thinner. After some time pressure testing the throttle base, I am confident in its durability, but it does sound and feel a little hollow. I also noticed in the unboxing some small barbing on the thumb side plate that contains the point of view hat and four way switches. These barbs come from slight imperfections in the edges of the mould that was used to construct the plate and were easily fixed with about 60 seconds with a fine nail file. It's something that's not uncommon to notice when dealing with products made from moulded plastic. Other than this small amount of barbing on the side plate, the rest of the throttle was very well finished and sits comfortably in the hand with the main throttle grip being finished in the same plastic as the base, but with a slightly rougher texture for improved grip. The throttle features a rotational axis under the pinky finger, two small buttons on the left hand finger side, and a two-way switch that I use for flap or mode control. Two unique features on the finger side are a self-centering rudder axis on the lower base and a rather unique console controller styled thumbstick. This button has a push switch built into it much like you would find on a controller and also acts as a second joystick. The side plate carries a point of view hat at the top followed by two four-way switches each with their own unique design to make them easy to identify without looking and a thumb pip at the base of the throttle. The really interesting part of the throttle is its slide design. Rather than rotating around a fixed point, the TWCS throttle runs on a slider that moves the whole throttle quadrant forward and backwards in operation without changing angle. Overall, I was pretty happy with the look and the feel of what I found in the box, so to begin testing. To test the 16000 MFCS, I ran it through a number of different games and simulations, including Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous, DCS World, IL-2 The Battle of Stalingrad and the Battle of Moscow, Rise of Flight, and War Thunder. First in testing was Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous. In these two games I use a very similar control profile as they are both space flight simulators with levels of Newtonian flight modeling. Recently I've been experimenting with dual stick setups and as such I noticed immediately a use for the console style thumbstick. This thumbstick in conjunction with the self-centering rudder axes on the throttle effectively doubles the throttle as a second joystick with twist function. While the axis on the thumbstick is not quite as precise due to having a smaller range of motion, I was able to easily control the spacecraft's thrusters, allowing for strafing maneuvers in conjunction with pitch and roll and yaw provided by the joystick. This effectively allowed me some of the advantages of a twin stick setup without having to sacrifice the functionality of the HOTAS, which is something I found very appealing. In spite of the lack of buttons available on the base of the throttle, I found there was more than enough to assign all critical flight controls to the stick and throttle alone, while only needing to map non-critical functions such as the landing gear to the joystick base. 
The stick itself performed well as expected. The hole sensors in the joystick are precise as you would expect due to also being used in the Warthog. The single stage trigger is light with a very sharp activation which felt excellent as well. My only real complaint with the stick itself was the buttons around the point of view hat. They felt a little squishy and soft rather than the sharp clicks that I'm used to. That said, they work perfectly fine and you can put that down to just personal preference. You can see that the T16000M FCS has been designed with this new generation of space combat sims in mind. I was very impressed with the controller's performance here. So next up I moved into Rise of Flight, IL-2 and DCS, World War 1, World War 2 and modern warfare flight simulators. Rise of Flight performed wonderfully under the T16000 MFCS. The controls on the throttle and stick were more than enough to assign all controls, the pinky roller serving as the radiator control quite nicely. I found the pinky axis to be extremely precise, making it no issue at all controlling the aircraft's radiator by single percentage increments, while requiring very little effort to monitor. The pinky axis is also far enough away from the main grip that accidentally hitting it is a very little issue. IL-2 and DCS, however, had more major issues. In DCS in particular, the main one was the lack of available controls. This is hardly a surprise with the complexity of DCS's simulation, but I was unable to bind all critical flight systems to the HOTAS, and also discovered a slight problem with the usage of a standalone stick in conjunction with the throttle to create a HOTAS. The buttons that would be traditionally on the base of a throttle in a HOTAS setup, are in this case, are on the base of the stick. This means that to activate a button you need to take your hand from the throttle and cross your body in order to hit the buttons on the base of the stick, or alternatively take your hand off the stick in order to strike the buttons on the base, sacrificing control of the aircraft in doing so. Other than the lack of available buttons, the stick and throttle work perfectly fine in a DCS environment. The only other thing to add is being a single axis throttle, uh, you won't be able to control multi-engine aircraft independently. In IL-2, a different problem popped up. While there were more than enough buttons on the HOTAS for all critical controls, what I found noticeably missing was the lack of axes. Due to the throttle surrendering three axes to make up the X and Y of the mini joystick and the Z axes for the self-centering rudder, the T-1600 MFCS only has a single free axes, two if you count the throttle at the base of the stick. Aircraft in IL-2 or other World War II flight sims can often have axis assignments for fuel mixture, RPM, prop pitch, engine radiator and oil radiator, all of which are best controlled by assigning them to an axis control. While I was able to bind the two critical control axes to the axis assignments available in the pinky and the throttle on the stick respectively, this is namely engine, RPM and fuel mixture, and assign the radiator controls to buttons, I did find myself wishing that I had at least one additional axis to use. Unfortunately, as the mini stick and the rudder both self-centered at 50%, using these was not possible. And last but not least was War Thunder. As War Thunder Sim carries a level of automation for engine management, the T16000M performed perfectly here again, and I was able to assign the radiator cow controls to the pinky axes to streamline the aircraft during flight, and let the auto controls manage everything else. As an added test here for fun during a flight test, I assigned aircraft pitch, roll, and yaw, along with weapons fire, to the mini stick, rudder axes, and the thumb trigger on the throttle to see if it was possible to fly an aircraft completely off the throttle without a joystick. While I did sacrifice a level of control and precision over what I would have on the joystick due to the limited movement range of the mini stick, I was able to take off, fly around, and land using this configuration. Although I did notice at slight moments at this point that occasionally the mini stick wouldn't perfectly self-center, it would be slightly off position. Going into the available software for the FCS that is available from the Thrustmaster website and assigning a simple 2% dead zone on the mini stick, however, corrected this completely. So my conclusions. Overall, I'm extremely impressed with the performance of the Thrustmaster T16000M FCS. While it does have its little niggles here and there, as an entry-level HOTAS system, you would expect that. And at a price of only 130 US dollars, the T16000M FCS, in my opinion, is the highest quality and most affordable entry-level HOTAS system available on the market today. Anyways, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll leave links to a selection of places you can order the new HOTAS from if you're interested in it in the video description down below. And as always, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.